I used to play for a living, but I don't really play much at all anymore besides just trying out these instruments as I build them. Um, but recently I kind of got the bug to start playing a little bit again. And what I don't want to do is put together a set where it's just like, you know, me and an acoustic guitar, like the last in the world needs another gray bearded guy singing songs about how to save the world. So um, I was thinking, well, one thing I can do to maybe do something a little bit different is to change the instrumentation. And I was experimenting with just like playing the bass, my primary instrument, um, but I wasn't feeling that sonically. And then I thought, I know, I'll build myself a baritone guitar, an acoustic baritone guitar. So that's what I'm going to start building in this video. Um, I'm building this for me, and it's a good thing because, well, let's see if you can spot what I did wrong. Okay, so as I mentioned in the intro, this is a baritone acoustic guitar I'm making, and I'm using two previous instruments as my sort of templates for it. One is this uh, electric baritone guitar I made a little while back, and I used that neck and scale proportions, and then I just applied that to my Z acoustic guitar body style I've been working on. Um, and started and started going so it wasn't too too much prep work to get that going and you can see there I was making the neck on my Avid CNC from a piece of mahogany uh, that I had left over from another instrument it was cut off the sides of that and that was all uh, quote reclaim mahogany is mahogany that was getting thrown away at a house clean out and then this is a piece of some kind of barn wood I've got my hands on I don't know something hard that I cut out my interior blocks with uh, and then I'm making my fingerboard out of some uh, local maple and uh, let's stop right here for a second and tell me if you see anything wrong I didn't yet. So and then um, I, I did epoxy inlays and, uh, you know, as I kind of typically do um, by brushing them out, putting some epoxy and then, hey, notice anything wrong? I didn't yet. Um, and then uh, after the epoxy dries, I can go over and, and cut the, the fingerboards again, clean them all up and, and everything. So then I use my laser to cut out some files. You see I made some modifications to the Z uh, sound hole, but other than that, it's basically the same shape. Um, and uh, I just thought I'd try something different, you know, why not, while you're experimenting. Love that laser. And these are all, of course, using reclaimed closet doors for backs and sides because that's what I do. And these are some fairly pretty ones that have um, some mahogany on them. But so now that the epoxy is dry, I can go back in and clean up these fingerboards and cut my fret slots and cut them all out. Notice anything weird about this yet? I didn't. The other fingerboard on the bench is for the nylon 12 string that I'm making in conjunction with this. Go check out that video. But uh, yeah, everything, everything. I didn't notice anything wrong yet, did you? After sanding prior to fretting, I put a quick coat of natural varnish on there and uh, eh, notice anything wrong yet? I didn't. One of these days I'll get a small arbor press as a dedicated fret press, but I'm still just using my drill press to press the frets in. And uh, as I'm doing this, I didn't notice anything wrong. Everything looked good to me. Then, of course, I have to glue the fingerboard on. Now, you know, of course, I have to very carefully inspect it as I take it off and then start doing the final sanding. Didn't notice anything wrong. How about you? I made this neck just a little bit thinner than I usually do because it is uh, triple reinforced, and I made the shape like this sort of half hexagon shape I was experimenting with a while back that I kind of like. It's pretty comfortable, and uh, since I'm making this for me, looks good. Nothing wrong. <laughs> I thought I'd experiment a little bit. Um, you know, time to do the fret work. But back to the body. So I glued together my neck and heel block and I got those ready. I used the same mold that I've been using for about, I don't know, 15 or so guitars now. And I am now starting to think about changing this mold out to make a couple subtle differences. I also went and I picked up this fretting uh, blade and I had to pick up a little table saw for it so I could start making my own kerfing. I think it's going to pay for itself in a while. Um, and I'm just using some of my scrap wood. So it's a little bit of an expense. It was about $300 all in for this cheap table saw and this blade. But uh, at the rate that I'm making acoustic guitars, I think that I will make that money back uh, on kerfing. I did all my same basic bracing. And again, I'm using these uh, reclaimed closet doors. So it's a plywood. It uh, has a little bit more structural integrity than regular wood. And you don't have to worry about the the you know splits in the grain because the grain's crossed over but you still want to brace it i'm going to be putting those baritone tuned strings on there so there's going to be a little bit of tension this is the back of course on the top i did my traditional x bracing that's you know slightly modified uh to fit my body style and i used just slightly thicker cross bearing uh wood for this x brace uh, normally it's, it's a little bit thicker a little bit wider than i normally would to kind of compensate for uh, this more tension that it'll be under and then uh, the rest of it's 
you know, pretty much the same. Like the nylon guitar that I'm making, I thought I'd paint the inside of this one blue, just, you know, kind of partly to use this uh, Total Blood Elixir paint up. And I had to paint the whole inside because the sound hole in this one's in the middle, so you can see everywhere. And then it was time to, you know, I glued on the back and top the same way I have before. This time I used clamps instead of weight, and that was why in last week's video, the nylon guitar, I had to use weight because all of my clamps were, were busy doing this at the same time. Also, as I discussed in last week's video, when you're bending this Luan plywood, sometimes you have some problems. And on this guitar, there's fewer bends in, um, than the nylon string guitar, and I've done a few of them, so I'm, I was pretty good at it, and everything came out okay. I'm going to be okay with these sides. And I have these little pieces of skateboard uh, laminates left over from my friend Ben over at Will Be Design. We did some projects together a few years back, and I, I thought this would be a fun guitar to use up some of these scraps, like here on this um, this end block. Now, I don't center this, by the way, on my guitars. It's a little bit off-center because I, I'm doing these offset acoustics, so that'll drive some people nuts, but I think it's kind of funny to do that, that this is just a little bit away from the middle. Um, so I added that skateboard veneer, and I thought, well, I'll use the skateboard veneer for some other stuff, too, but first I needed to get some finish on here, and after sanding to about 320, I applied a little bit of linseed oil, let that sit overnight, and then I applied some Rubio Mono Coat, which um, just makes it kind of look and feel natural. Okay, time for the commercial portion of this video. And if you know me, you know I don't take corporate money and don't do commercials except for for myself and to thank the people over at patreon.com slash timsway who helped me keep this channel alive. And of course, people who shop in my store. So today we're gonna to talk about New Perspectives Music where I sell my guitars that I make here, but more importantly, I sell parts. Like right now, this baritone guitar, I'm making a custom pickup for, and I've been making custom pickups for a while, and I also make some of them available to you over at newperspectivesmusic.com. This is my favorite one right here. This is the uh, the $2 bill foil, sort of uh, roughly based on the vintage gold foil pickup. It has a real vintage sound, and it's a surface mount pickup. I also make uh, these really cool single coil bass guitar pickups are kind of for like a vintage P before the split pickup kind of sound. And it comes with a template, so this is great for builders. You could almost build your whole bass um, right around this. Um, but the one I just wanted to talk about today was the redesigned Dump Diver. So this is a pickup that is another surface mount I came up with a little while back, and I've changed it now because it surface mounts great on electric guitars and arch tops, but on acoustic guitars, many of them, like this kind of classic style acoustic guitar, it was too tall, and so you'd have to put it in the sound hole. So what I did is I increased the size of the case. There's a little bit of foam in there, so now I can pop it right into the sound hole. I can't really do it while I'm talking, but I can. There we go. You can pop that right in the sound hole like a sound hole pickup and wire it in however I want. And I'm not having to screw holes into my guitar because that is a concern for some people. And now you can do that too over at newperspectivesmusic.com. Let's get back to the bear zone. I got inspired by my little tailpiece with the uh, Wobby Design uh, skateboard scraps. So I ran some of that and some closet door through my sander and through my laser and I decided to make a pick guard and some other matching parts out of the uh, skateboard material I thought would look pretty good. I did this little inlay, just some tape and glue to hold it together because you're never going to see the tape and then um, a little bit of just spray on there. And then I did the same thing for the bridge. I know that the skateboard with all those seams I, was, I wouldn't trust, so I backed it up with a piece of maple um, and now I feel like I have a bridge that's strong enough. And then I finally noticed something. Maybe you did already? <laughs> I was just starting to do the setup on this on this baritone guitar and I'm checking the scale and I'm getting ready to draw my bridge in and things are not making sense. I'm like, the math isn't working out. The math isn't working out. I'm measuring to the 12th fret and I'm getting this number of 14 and a quarter and it should have been, you know, like more like, you know, 13 and a half. And I'm like, why is that wrong? And I realized three, five, seven, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. These are all <laughs> off by a fret. See, there's three here instead of two. <laughs> so, uh, uh, since the beginning, I've been making this as my guitar, and uh, it's definitely my guitar now. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm going to have to, because this is going to mess with my head, I am going to have to drill like a little holes or something and just fill you know just put some kind of markers there just so i don't go insane <laughs>
So did you spot my mistake before I did? <laughs> so it just amazes me how it's like uh, you can read through typos, you know? I just did not see that every step of the process from the computer design all the way up until the last minute when I'm trying to place the bridge. Uh, but that's what happens, you know, we're humans and we make mistakes sometimes uh, seeing the forest or the trees or something like that. So tune in to the next installment of this video to see how I solved this problem and uh, what the final instrument looks and sounds like. See you then.